Meanwhile, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley will hold an event in Charleston on Wednesday where she is expected to launch her campaign for the White House. Joining us now is the co-founder and CEO of All In Together, Lauren Leader, who has a new piece for Politico entitled Nikki Haley's Woman Problem. Lauren, you write in part this, as Nikki Haley kicks off her 2024 campaign this week in Charleston, South Carolina, one big question looms. Will she have a fair shot as a woman candidate at a moment of maximal sexism in Republican politics? Under the best of circumstances, women who run for president face a particularly pernicious strain of American gender bias that has overshadowed every previous campaign. It's not just Trump or right-wing extremist men that push sexist ideology in the Republican Party. Congresswomen Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert have both embraced anti-feminism despite their own career ambitions. Politics is as much about time and place as it is about talent. And in this time and place, the hurdles for a woman in the Republican Party are exceptionally high. Whether we agree with Haley's positions or not, we should all root for a level political playing field that stays in the bounds of decency and civility. Unfortunately, in today's Republican political reality, the chances that happens are slim to none. But Lauren, does she have a chance maybe to define herself as a female Republican candidate and take on positions that perhaps other Republicans are too dumb to realize most of the American people are already there? Well, that's a big question, and it remains to be seen. I think, you know, we've seen this before, and, I, you know, I've got a lot of response to my piece, which ran yesterday, from folks who say, well, what about the Republican governors, the women governors around the country who've won successfully? I happen to believe that presidential politics is just a completely different ballgame and that the kind of national scrutiny is different. Um, right now, you've got a number of groups, particularly folks that have been aligned with Trump, that are just virulently anti-woman. And one of the things I call it in the piece is we all understand that Nick Fuentes, who, of course, famously has had lunch or dinner with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. We know he's an anti-Semite, but what people know less is how virulently anti-woman he is, that he's someone who mm -hmm. said that women should not have the right to vote, that they should be veiled. I mean, it just goes on and on. The Proud Boys, a lot of the groups that were aligned with the Stop the Steal rally and were involved in the attack on the Capitol on January 6th, they have virulently hateful anti-woman rhetoric, so much so that the Southern Poverty Law Center now tracks a lot of these groups as male supremacist hate groups. So I think she walks in at a moment where she's as qualified as anyone else in the field. She has every right to be on the national stage. We've known for a while that she was probably going to do this. But the question is, can she get a fair shot? I hope she can. Let me uh, ask this. I, I dealt with uh, her when she was governor of uh, South Carolina around the uh, Confederate flag issues. She's a charming person, certainly uh, has the skills of, uh, I think, to go national. But the two issues that uh, surprised me that, that, that was raised in the state at that time that I'm hearing also nationally is, of course, the woman issue and that she's non-white. Yeah. How, will, how will the fact that she's not considered by some, uh, uh, like you brought up Fuentes, as le uh, all the way a white candidate and a woman candidate, how does the combination of the two play in Republican primary? I think we're about to find out, and I think it's exceptionally complicated and difficult right now. Because, look, the debase of the Republican Party has become increasingly whiter and male over the last six years. And that's just the sort of democratic reality, the, the reality, excuse me, demographic reality of who votes in Republican primaries. So I think we'll see. In, in some ways, I feel like if she had run six or eight years ago, she actually would have faced a very different landscape than what she faces today. But that core base of who votes in the primaries has shifted to become so, mm. you know, sort of white, purist. I mean, it's it's really, we, we've talked about it so much here on the show. So I'm watching to see, and, you know, we saw what happened to Carly Fiorina when she ran for president, just the sort of virulent sexism that she faced, really unfair, gross stuff. And I really hope she doesn't, and I, I hope, I know we'll all be part of calling it out when that stuff happens. You know, fair game on policy and policy politics. But when it starts to veer into just, you know, overtly racist, sexist territory, we all have an obligation to call it out.